Um, we'll start with last week. You had 13 days off from your last game, no FA Cup match. You decided to take the players away to Tenerife. Some of them have described it as a, a hard work and intense camp. What was it like for you as the boss? Did you get what you wanted out of it? I think, yes, it was an uh, intensive uh, time, but I think we needed it because, uh, yeah, we're still on the line and <laughs> I think we have a, lot, a, a, a hard uh, way to go until the end. And so it was important to use the time where we had uh, the chance to speak with every player, show him what was good until now and what was not so good. We took a lot of points uh, until now, but um, you see, uh, it's yeah, uh, the, the same amount of points we need until the end of the season, because uh, we will need 40 points maybe this year to stay in the league. And I think um, that for therefore it was important to to get a, a reminder and uh, to speak about things uh, we just improved in our game and about things that uh, can be better in the future for all the different challenges we are facing in the next weeks against top teams or teams in our zone. So I think uh, we showed that we we can take points against the, against the big teams but also lose points against the small teams and I think um, it it's important that uh, for the end of the season we have a plan for every game and that's what we try to to prepare in this in this week and in terms of the training camp how important is it at this stage of the season with 12 games to go that you you get together with your players you you, you learn more about them they learn more about you and your philosophy is that was that was that key the first key was uh, to after the disappointing game we don't want to look back that we get a new spirit again in our team. It was, I think, a good time to, to work there in, in a good atmosphere. It would be easier if we if we had uh, won the last game, but uh, it wasn't. And so uh, maybe the focus was, was a little bit higher also from the players. And that's maybe the advantage because they know we have to do more. We know we have to do to bring more on the pitch like we did in the last three games. And uh, so it was easier for me to be critical sometimes. Um, and maybe this can help us in the uh, last 12 games. You touched upon the 40-point mark. Is that the target you have set your players between now and the end of the season? That's what you feel will keep them in the Premier League? I think we all know that 24 are not enough. So every point we take more is a good one. But uh, no, we are focusing now on, 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 on the next game against a, po a difficult opponent, uh, a very good uh, opponent. We just beat once in this year uh, in a big game uh, with a fantastic performance and I think we should meet, need a, another one and uh, I'm not afraid about uh, all the big teams that are following now uh, because um, we showed against Chelsea and against Arsenal that we can also play against this team's good matches and uh, we will need, that's for sure. You talk about replicating that performance against Arsenal this weekend. How big a challenge is it to, to do what you've already done against a, a very difficult and a good side? It's Every game is difficult, but uh, I think in the first game we showed that we, we can bring this surprising result. Um, we showed that we... We were defending very well. I think that's the key key part against these teams. Um, they played different, like uh, the the last three opponents we had in the league. Maybe we have don't have so much ball possession. I don't know. Uh, we are not hundred percent sure in what shape they will come, and we also have a few a few changes in our mind what we do with our team. So it would be interesting, also tactically. I think. In terms of tactically, how, how do you approach a game like this? Because obviously Arsenal have so much quality going forward. Um, Aubameyang and, and Lacazette have, have got goals recently, but defensively they look they look frail. Is that something you can exploit? I think we we saw in the first game that it, they don't need a lot of chances to score. <laughs> it was um, two times in the first game, um, but it's also a quality now from us. I think we we showed that in the away games uh, since I'm here, uh, we only lost against Cardiff, and uh, in the other away games we we could. Uh, uh, keep uh, good results always uh, and uh, I think it would be a good mixture between def defensive balance and also uh, winning the balls and, and transition forward, a quick transition forward that can also create problems for Arsenal like we did in the first game.
but it would be interesting because every uh, manager is is always uh, looking for for changes if it does, something doesn't work and so we do both and uh, let's have a look who has the be better decisions on the weekend what's the southampton team news ahead of the game yeah, we have uh, a few players back in training. Uh, so Michael Obafemi trained the whole two weeks with the team. Um, it seems that he this injury is, is gone and and has no no muscle problems anymore. That helps us because it's a new, another option we have in the front, and mainly with his speed and his quality, he's a, he's a a good option for me. Um, Mario Lumina uh, still don't train with the team. He has still problems, but uh, it's getting better and better. And uh, yeah, Stewie Armstrong is also back uh, on on the pitch. Uh, has no problems this two weeks. And uh, yeah, Danny Ings uh, is still out, so it would take a little bit more time. The Arsenal game is too early for Man United or Fulham. Can be close. I, I expect him coming back to to the Tottenham game. So Danny's another week or two away. Yes. You've touched upon Michael Obafemi there. He signed a new contract this week, a three and a half year deal. Obviously, someone that's come through the, the system at Southampton. It's all about the Southampton way. How important was it to secure him on a, a new deal, and how much does he offer to the club moving forward? I think the first important thing is that he's fit again. That's important for him because um, after his uh, goal against Huddersfield, uh, it was a long time now he was out. Um, for a young player, it's very important that he is always playing and, and uh, gets the chance to show uh, that he developed his game. He had a few qualities that can really be a weapon for us. Uh, his speed and, and also his, his uh, deep runs. And it's good that he's back. Uh, it's good that uh, the new contract is now uh, um, signed and, and he can concentrate 100% on his work and on his professionality. And I think that's important for him because he's a young player and uh, still a lot of work to do with him. But um, I hope that he, he stays focused like he was in the last four or five weeks since he was injured. Talking about him coming through the academy immediately, fans, the media and people will, will draw conclusions and attention to, to him as a, as a product of the system. You look at the likes of Gareth Bale and Theo Walcott and Oxlade Chamberlain, do you think he can be one of the greats down the line if he carries on his progression? I don't want to put, uh, put uh, this pressure on him because it doesn't help him. I think uh, the main part for the younger players is that they don't feel pressure, they are uh, open-minded and, and they are very positive if they go in the game because they don't think they can lose something, they only think they can win something and they think we should try to keep this uh, low pressure on them. Yeah, they, I don't expect too much for them, from them but what I expect is that they work hard and, and uh, if they get the chance to play that they are brave and, and show that, that um, yeah, they try to, to do their best on the pitch and I think um, that's the most important thing and he shouldn't look or, or think about what big players uh, this club uh, has sent in the, in, the, in, the, in the world of football. But uh, sure, he has uh, potential to, to, to be a striker that can uh, uh, create problems for the, for the opponents and I think um, yeah, I'm looking forward. If he stays fit, then he can uh, develop his game in a, in a good way, I think. Thank you. Ralph, well, before the Cardiff game, you told us you really wouldn't want to face your Southampton team. They were looking so good. So, having had some time to, to reflect, to analyse, what went, what went wrong against Cardiff? Uh, I think we we needed so much energy to, to put this game away. I don't want to, to blob it up again and I think uh, it's better now. Um, I think in both games against Cardiff, a lot of things um, went went against us, and I think uh, it was very hard to to understand why we lose why we lost this game because we had more chances. We came back, and then uh, I think the most positive thing was that that this team wanted to win this game in the last three minutes, although it was not the cleverest or smartest way to go after the draw. It means especially against an opponent, but what is in your zone in your area. 
but um, we spoke about this. I took out the positive thing that that we we have a team that always wants to win games, and we should have won a little more. But there were also playing uh, games, for example, like this one against Leicester, where we won one man less, 55 minutes. You must not win this game, but we did. So over the whole season, you see that there are games you should have won, but didn't, and you mustn't won, but you did. So I think. At the end of the season, we look on the table and then we get what we deserve to get. And if it's enough, then we deserve to stay in the league. And if it's not enough, then we didn't deserve it. And the Arsenal game at home came before your first full week of training. Having had now two full weeks of training, how, how, how is that? Are you in particularly good shape going into this one? So it's what we are 6 4 now. And yeah. also <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think um, um, it m mustn't be an advantage that they play on Thursday evening, and and we didn't. But we know that uh, to to take something in 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 the Emirates Stadium is far away from from being easy. So, um, but we don't think about that. I think we we know that um, we can we can be a an opponent in an away game that is not easy to beat, that we showed, I think, uh, in the last uh, away games. And uh, that's the only thing that interests us, that we can be a strong opponent, that we can maybe take another clean sheet in London. So we did against Chelsea, and that can be a key for a, for a, for a good game for us. And the, um, you mentioned the one-to-one -one meetings you had in Tenerife again. Did, did everyone react to those the way you wanted? Were you were you pleasantly surprised at all with, with reactions you saw in training straight after that? I think one of or one or the other um, person in the was a little bit surprising because uh, um, you get uh, a, a good feeling for for the personal feeling of, of every player and, and uh, it's important that I get this feedback for how he feel, how he see his development or how positive or negative he sees his development, and I think that helps me to to find the right words in the future for him to 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 make him a better player. And for this, I think it was very interesting for me. Just finally, you, you sort of mentioned forty points. Start of last month, you mentioned you wanted <coughs> eight more wins to be safe. You've had two. Is it is the target then still six more? I don't know. Uh, it can be uh, possible that we need this uh, much uh, wins or we take a few more draws. Uh, I think it's important that we consistently take the points. Yeah? And uh, I can't tell you how much we need after these next four games. The more, the better. But uh, we are focusing on the first game now on, against Arsenal. I think uh, to make step by step this this way is the best the best way to not look too much on the table, not look too much on the other opponents, what they took on points. We know that there are six teams in our battling for one uh, uh, position, but also Fulham is not so far away and we play on next uh, Wednesday against Fulham. So it is it is a close, it is a tight run, uh, but uh, I think uh, at the end of the season we we have a chance to, 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 to come out of this, of this area, but uh, it can take uh, until the last game. Right, then that section there and move on to the one embargo for 10.30 this evening. Adam? Sure. Um, Arsenal and Man United, Tottenham coming up, look hard games, but, but their teams, that, the, the style in which they play, where they attack you, seems to suit your team better than the teams that come and just defend against you. Is that, is that a fair assessment, do you think? If you say that, <laughs> I don't know. Um, we showed that when we are good organized, it's not so easy to score against us. I think that's that's for sure. Um, but again, these teams have so much quality; they don't need a lot of chances. So it's always difficult to play against them. But we are not uh, frightened about any opponent in the moment. I think uh, the confidence in the team is a good one. Although we didn't win now the last three games, but we also lo lost only one in 2019. So it's it's okay that we have self-confidence, but 
it's also important that we know that small or uh, yeah, small mistakes can can make a huge difference between uh, winning points or not. And um, that was the the key message I think in the last two weeks that in some situations in the game it's not nothing about tactic or shape or or, or um, um, searching for a transition forward, but about keeping the sheet clean sheet, defending like a team in the last five minutes, be, be smart, uh, and in the overtime uh, don't take any risk anymore. And I think uh, this we try to we try to create this scenario also in the training, and it's important because um, I think we. We gave in the last two games uh, big points away in the list in this time, and we shouldn't in the future. Do you think, sort of following on from that, your your players are better when they sort of have this underdog mentality? You mentioned Leicester, a game that you wouldn't expect them to win, they did. You mentioned Arsenal, you wouldn't expect them to win, they did. The games at home, when they've had a lot of pressure on them, that you do expect them to win, they failed to win. So is is that a, is that a mental? Block or a mental positive? I don't know one or the other. I don't know if if uh, everyone expected that we win all these uh, th games at home against Cardiff and 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 Crystal Palace. Maybe uh, the chance was was there, but against Crystal Palace it was a very tough game. Normally, uh, we were in, in the bag, and then it was not so easy to come back. Um, but sometimes uh, i think uh, the patience is is more if 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 you know we play against a very good team because nobody expects something from you and that helps to stay calm if zero zero is a good result for you as long as it's zero zero everything is okay if it's zero zero against cardiff everyone is thinking it's too less yeah so that's maybe the difference and maybe that helps us against the bigger teams that can be possible yeah in terms of Michael Overfemi, we spoke about him, Mark asked about him, it sort of where he can progress to in the future. But obviously, you really, especially without Danny Ings, probably need him to be able to perform very well right now. Do you think he's capable of, of, of leading your attack during a very high pressure situation like now, even though he's only very young? A uh, high pressure situation is not a problem, I think. The problem for Michael is. Um, if we ha have, like we do now, three games in a week in six days, um, because the schedule is a, a crazy one, <laughs> now we have six, uh, three games in six days, and then uh, maybe again a long time off because the Watford game is is, is uh, cancelled, and then again maybe three games in a week. So it's a. Uh, uh, that's the the main problem, I think, because he's also a player who is uh, a type of player who sprints a lot, and and uh, this this player sometimes uh, for this player it's difficult to play three games in a week. Danny Ings was the same problem, I think, and um, that's that's we have a look. That's we want to, or we have to to pay attention about. Don't uh, hunt him now in every game. Because because uh, uh, we need him or or he has quality we need, so we will try to to give him that time to play that is good for him and not too much. You mentioned the schedule there. In some ways, do you think it penalises the, the smaller teams in the league because obviously your squad is not quite as deep as say Arsenal's and Man United. They can afford to rotate. You don't really have that luxury. No, I think our our squad is also as big that that we can we can change a few positions and I think I think we showed mainly after the derby game for example that we can play a good game on the weekend after 120 mi minutes uh, in the FA Cup so I think we are physically now in a in a other shape uh, like uh, as in the beginning of, of of my management time so in the last two games uh, two weeks helped us to to also rise our our physical strength I, I think and so i'm not afraid about that um maybe yeah, arsenal has sure bigger bigger quality in, on any position and 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 options in the in the second row maybe more than we have but uh, on it, it's it's only interesting on that one day when we face them who has more uh yeah, patient and more passion 
to to win this game and i think uh, i'm sure that my team gives everything they have on this on this uh, important game come up against the in, in in germany is, is stopping him a big part of your game plan for, for the weekend i think the same question came before the last game <laughs> and and i said and yeah, okay and <laughs> it was you, huh? <laughs> okay. It comes from that, from that corner. That was <laughs> the only thing I could imagine. That's the dark corner. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, we have to stop him as a team. Um, I think we did it so well that we lost uh, uh, Mkhitaryan out of our eyes. So he was the guy who scored twice. So maybe we should have a look on both now. Uh, no, it's, it's always... Uh, um, very difficult to to stop these players because they have a lot of quality, and um, especially at home they are very strong in their offense. But uh, I and also my my players, I think they like that that challenge or that kind of challenge, and uh, I'm looking forward to a, to a very interesting game. You mentioned the challenge, and Adam sort of touched on it. But do you think these type of games bring out the best in your players against? Should should be yeah, that uh, it comes out the best, uh, like we we showed against Chelsea, especially in the defense, a very organized, a very good balanced, a very passionate um, performance. I think that would help us a lot. That was your last clean sheet, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm speaking about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Have you spoken with Alex? Part of your meeting with with Alex McCarthy, did you? Talk a lot about the need for a clean sheet. I think we we must pay attention that this uh, this this topic of of um, the clean sheet is 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 a huge one, but it's it's um, um, it can help us, sure, because we show that we always can we we can score always, um, and um, but uh, I think. Um, we should we, we we shouldn't make it too big this topic because otherwise you you get a little bit cramped because uh, you need it with uh, with all you have so it's i think in against Chelsea it came because we 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 deserve to to have a clean sheet in this game we didn't give them a lot of chances and so yeah so the same we did against Cardiff or against uh, uh Burnley but uh, yeah i think it's time there was an interview that you gave quite early in your tenure here to uh, build, where, where you were quoted as saying that if Southampton didn't stay up, then effectively you would walk away because it would be seen as a failure on, on your part. Can you just clarify those those comments? I mean, will your future be determined by whether Southampton stay up or go down? Oh, sorry, but in, in the moment I don't think about uh, this situation. Uh, I'm too focused on on what we do every day and and how we prepare this team and uh, if that comes the moment then you can ask me this question from this dark corner here. Thank you very much guys. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you.